Hello, and welcome to another tutorial presented by the Statistics and Methods Lab at Arizona State University, and today we'll be talking about the Levine's Test. This video is based on the tutorial authored and edited by Nikki Jang. I'll be using the software package SPSS, but the general concepts we touch on today will apply to whatever statistics program your institution provides. As a quick reminder, variance is defined as the average of the squared differences from the mean. It measures how far the values in your data set for a specific variable are spread out. For a number of statistical procedures, one important assumption we have to make is that the variances in the sample groups are approximately equal, or in other words, that the samples have homogeneity of variance. If the groups have unequal variances, then it increases the likelihood that the results we get from our hypothesis test are incorrect, with the type of error depending on the degree of difference in sample size, and variance between groups. The Levine's test is an inferential statistic to assess the equality of variances for one variable calculated for two or more groups. That is to say, this test assesses the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Like any hypothesis test, Levine's test defines a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between the variances of the sample groups. In contrast, the alternative hypothesis is that there is a significant difference between the variances of the sample groups. Unlike other significance tests, where we might be hoping to reject the null hypothesis, in a Levine's test, we actually do not want to reject the null hypothesis. That is, we are looking for evidence that the variances within the two groups are approximately equal to each other, which would be supported by a non-significant Levine's test statistic. Let's try it with an example in SPSS. We'll be using data from the 2006 General Social Survey. This data set can be downloaded freely via the link below. Here we have three variables, gender or sex, the number of hours the respondent or participant works per week, hours two, and income our income. For this example, imagine that we want to perform two independent samples t-tests to examine whether males and females differed in a the number of hours they work per week and b their annual income. Let's start by clicking analyze, go to compare means, and then select independent samples t-test. The box on the left side of the window that opens up is a list that includes all of the variables in this data set. Right click on any one of the variables and choose display variable names. This will help us identify the variables we're going to use more quickly. Choose hours too, and then click on the arrow to put it into the test variables box. Choose sex, and then click on the lower arrow to put it into the grouping variable box. Then click on Define Groups and input 1 for Group 1 and 2 for Group 2. We do this because the software needs us to define the groups we're comparing. You can check the grouping information in the Values column from the Variable view for other categorical variables. In this case, the number 1 refers to all male respondents and the number 2 refers to all female respondents. Once you are done, go ahead and click OK. In the output window, you will see two variables. The information regarding the Levine's test appears in the first two columns of the second table, titled Independent Samples T-Test. In the first column, we can see that the Levine's test statistic, the F value here, is 2.147. We can find the significance level of this test statistic in the second column, where it says SIG. And we can see that the p-value, or significance level, is larger than 0.05. This tells us that the variance for number of hours worked per week of males and females are not significantly different from each other. Remember, for the Levine's test, this is what we are hoping to find. We want to find evidence of a non-significant difference in variances between our two groups, so that we can move forward with the assumption of homogeneity of variance. 
This will allow us to have greater confidence in the accuracy of the results of the actual t-test that we perform to determine whether male and female GSS respondents differ significantly in number of hours worked per week. Because we found support for equality of variances, we will use the top row of the t-test results for interpretation. Here we can see that there is a marginally significant difference between males and females in the number of hours they work per week. Now, let's try it with a different dependent variable, r income, using the same test. As you can see in the output, this time we have a significant value that is less than 0.05 for the Levine's test, which means that the within group variances for income are significantly different for males and females. In other words, the degree of variability in income scores for males is significantly different from the degree of variability in, in income scores for females, and thus, the assumption of homogeneity of variance is not met. Remember that the results of the actual independent samples t-test are separate from the results of the Levine's test. To determine whether male and female respondents differ in their income level, we need to look at the t-test results. Because of the significance of the Levine's test, we will need to use the bottom row, where it says equality of variances not assumed to interpret the t-test results. As we can see, there is a significant difference between genders in annual income. It is also important to note that when you're running a t-test, the Levine's test will be automatically performed in SPSS. To perform a Levine's test for an analysis of variance, that is, if you want to compare the means between three groups and need to test for homogeneity of variance, you'll need to add an extra command. This can be achieved by checking the homogeneity of variance test in the options menu. I hope that this review about the Levine's test has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us a line on Facebook, via email, or just come by the SAM lab at ASU West. We also have a presence online. If you're an ASU student, you can book a virtual appointment with us through our website. I've been Ryan, and I'll see you next time.